Hey y'all, we're going to talk calendars in this video and to do that I have landed on Monica Grubb's sixth grade page. Um, right now Monica has chosen to use a, a Hopkins apps or a Google calendar that she has embedded in an HTML block on her page. So I kind of wanted to show you the difference between using an embedded apps calendar like this one or just using the built-in Moodle calendar. So I'm just gonna go back and click on this back arrow so you can see some of the events that she has in here. When we get our design or our new themes for Moodle 2.0 worked out, the right-hand column and the left-hand column will be a little bit wider. So even though a lot of the text is cut off here, you would be able to see a lot more. Now, one of the major advantages of using the apps calendar is that it's very easily subscribable by students, um, especially if they use their own personal apps calendar. They can get their teachers posted events on their own calendar. And the other thing about it is it's very easy, super, super easy to post events or um, things on that calendar. So let's talk then about the Moodle calendar. So in doing so, I'm gonna actually add that to this page. So I'm going to turn editing on because that's one of the Moodle created blocks that is available under the add a block menu in the lower right hand corner. So I'm going to go under there and I am going to choose calendar. At this point the page will refresh and anytime you add a new block it always ends up at the very bottom. So this is what the Moodle calendar looks like. So what I wanted to do is just show you one unique thing related to the Moodle calendar. So right now we're on June 29th. One of the things that Monica does is that she uses the assignment module because she, in this particular unit, has students digitally submit their assignments, which means that they actually uh, do this in a paperless way. When you use the assignment module, if you go to the update window where you fill out the fields, one of the things that you can do is you can put a due date on it. And so I'm gonna enable the due date and I'm gonna say that the due date is June 29th. And now I'm gonna save this page and return to the course and we'll take a look at what that does to the calendar. There is a correlation between the Moodle calendar and the assignment module. So now you can see that that June 29th is highlighted. If I hover over it, hover means just to, um, not to click, but just to go over the top of the number, you're going to be able to see that there is an assignment due that day. So if you want that automatic correlation between the, the calendar, the built-in calendar, and the assignment module, you might consider the Moodle calendar. The other thing to keep in mind is that it's a little more laborious to add things to this calendar. So for instance, if there was a school dance on the, on the 29th as well, to add that event, I would click on the month and then I would click on new event and I would want to make this a course event um, which means that it would be on the calendar in this course if it was a user event it would only go on Terry Oslin's Moodle calendar no, and nobody else would see it but I'm gonna write in here school dance and I could fill out the rest of the information I can certainly add uh, details like don't forget to wear a costume and then I click Save Changes. So now um, there are two events associated with this date. I'm going to go back to my breadcrumbs to go to the Moodle homepage for Grub and now when I hover over the calendar, the Moodle calendar that is, we are going to see two events. So a school dance and um, I and assignment number one. Now I could get more detail for either of these as the student by clicking on the event and you're gonna see more detail. So there are some nice features of the Moodle calendar and it's completely up to you which one you'd like to use. 
Now I wanted to show you one more course where a teacher has used the Moodle calendar in a slightly different way. And that is Karen Johnson. She's a science teacher at the high school. So if I go down at look at her calendar, this was a course that ended in January. So I have to go back to here. And if I click on any given day, the 18th, you can see that there's a couple quizzes that she made available, but mostly what she has for every day is what she calls the daily schedule. So she actually goes into the calendar, posts a daily schedule, and almost just plain uses this like um, a summary of what, um, what the students were to do in class. And she also uses it so that students can get worksheets that they might have uh, missed out on or that if they were not in class, it would be a copy of the worksheet they could print at home, or if they had laptops or iPads in class, this like this BBC Organize Your Organs game would be a hot link to go work on that particular assignment during class. And she also just has these internal Moodle links as well. So for instance, if I click on the respiratory system assignment, it takes them to the quiz module where the student could attempt the quiz. So there's that internal linking um, that is associated with her creating an agenda almost for every single day. And that is her way of organizing um, her daily activities in class. So she just generates this quick quickly and it's also her way of um, helping students to keep track of what they've done especially if they miss a day and they need to go back and see what it is that they need to make up. So that's another idea for using the built-in calendar. Um, you could do that same sort of thing in the Moodle, excuse me, in the Hopkins Apps calendar but you cannot do hot links. You don't have as much opportunity to add images or hot links. Um, it's going to be more straight text in the uh, Google Calendar. So hopefully that helps you to make your decision which calendar you're wanting to use.